Hi there, my name is Mr. Taylor. I teach sixth grade science in Seattle. And as you could probably tell from the title of this video, today we're going over lesson 2.1 of the weather patterns unit. Um, welcome to my living room as we go through this. Um, whether you do know me or you don't know me, um, I'm really glad you're here and that we'll be able to uh, think about some things about uh, weather patterns and what's going on with different sized rainstorms. Um, before we go into this chapter, I thought I'd just quickly go over chapter one where we learned a ton of stuff. Um, there was a quick refresher on how when things, when water gets warmer, it can evaporate and become a gas in the air. But as that gas gets colder, it can condense into a cloud and then eventually fall down as rain. Um, we also learned a lot about air parcels and how they move and how we can really track what they're doing and a really big idea that we kind of learned near the end of that last chapter is that the more an air parcel cools down, the more rainfall that it's going to make. So our lesson here, as you can see, uh, the title is Air Parcels in the Trophosphere. So clearly we're going to be looking at air parcels and uh, an area called the trophosphere, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but for now, we're just going to start off with a quick warm up. Let's see if I can get my page to load here. There we go. So um, for our warm up, oops. Oh man, technical difficulties. There we go. Um, so for our warm up, um, we've got this picture that shows energy from the sun, it shows the air. Um, the surface and it shows these energy transfer arrows and our question is which statement best describes how the Sun heats the air um, the energy from the Sun is transferred to the Earth's surface and some of the energy is transferred to the air or energy from the Sun is transferred to the air and to think about this you kind of have to think about our last unit ocean atmosphere and climate where we did that experiment where we put the lamp over the rocks versus the lamp over nothing to see how the air temperature was impacted. And um, as this uh, picture here shows, um, energy from the sun is going to the earth first, it's going to the surface, and then to the air. The sun has to heat up a surface before it heats up the air. So which statement best describes it would be A. Right, so let's move on to our next activity then, uh, which will involve the simulation. But before we get there, I want to just go over a couple of things. So um, hopefully um, you will recognize this picture here where uh, you should have noticed a couple lessons ago where this was showed that before the lake, they had a uh, not very much water near the town and they had mild rainstorms but after the lake was made so these three ones here when there was a lot of water nearby the town the amount of rainfall went up a lot which makes sense because we learned that more surface water means more evaporation which means you have more water in the air to make rain but the thing is the rain continued to get worse um, so it was moderate, and then it was severe, and then it was a very severe storm. So in this chapter, in chapter two, what we're going to be doing is looking at what is causing this? What is causing these rainstorms to get so much worse um, as, as time is going on for this town to help them solve this problem? And um, we, we, like I mentioned earlier, we already know that as an air parcel loses energy, as this picture is showing, um, it's able to make more rain. But what we don't really know uh, all the way yet is, is what is causing, uh, like what determines how much an air parcel will cool down? Um, what, what is kind of determining how cold it will get and how much rain that it'll make? So that's something that we'll be looking at here um, as we go into our simulation. So, um, let's see here. So our simulation has uh, only a couple steps, so it's nice that it's kind of nice and short. Um, so we're going to launch the simulation, go to regional weather mode one, 
And then what it'll ask us to do is make some air parcels of different temperatures and observe how high each one rises. Um, and fill the data table to answer the questions below. So nice and simple. Um, if you have access to Amplify in the simulation at home, you can totally do this on your own and then just skip ahead in the video. Um, if you don't, I will be going through this and looking at the data with you. So um, if you don't have that, no worries. We'll go, go through it together here now. Uh, so first, I'll just open up the sim. And I know I want to make a hot air parcel. And I want to record the starting air temperature and its height. So let's go into the simulation. We have to go to regional weather mode one. Uh, that's important here. So I'll go to regional weather one. And it said I wanted to make this one warm, right? My first test is a hot air parcel. Yeah. So a hot air parcel would mean I need lots of energy from the sun, so I'm just going to crank that one all the way up um, and press run. But I need to make sure to pause when I see when the, the temperature is at its maximum because um, that's something I need to record. Okay, so I paused it there, 40 degrees. So I'll have to remember 40 degrees is its highest temperature. Um, so I will keep going. Okay, it's rising, it's losing energy. We know that's happening. It's making that cloud. And it is how high? 7.5 kilometers. All right. So um, let's go back here then. So it started at 40 degrees and it went 7.5 kilometers into the air. All right. Next up is a warm air parcel. So I'm just going to go back to build. I'd say warm. I wish I could do between two and three. Let's just see where it puts me. It put me at three. Uh, so we'll try warm as three from the sun and we're doing the same thing. So we're letting it run. The energy is coming down from the sun. That air parcel, the ground is heated up and then the air parcel is heated up. I need to make sure I'm ready to pause. Okay. So its final temperature is 30. And now let's see how high it goes up. So it's very similar. It's rising, losing energy, and there is some rainfall there as well. But it didn't go quite as high. Um, it only went 5.5. So if I go back here, I could say it started at 30 degrees, and it went 5.5 kilometers. So lower temperature and not as high up. I'm already starting to see a pattern there. And lastly is a cold air parcel with sunlight at zero. So I go back to build, set the sunlight to zero, and press run and find out what happens. Oh. Oh, there's not much happening. Um, Oh, that must be because there's no energy from the sun, so this isn't warming up at all, right? And it's not warming up at all. Uh, and I guess it's not, if it's not warm, it's not going to rise. Um, interesting. So 15 and it rose 0. All right. So starting temperature was 15 and it rose 0, 0.0 kilometers. All right. Nice and simple uh, simulation test, but we do have a question. So uh, let me see if I can move this real quick. There we go. So looking back at the table at the starting temperature of each air parcel and the final height of each air parcel, what pattern do you notice? So um, as so I guess we have temperatures going down here. So as the temperature goes down, what happens to the height? Just give you a second to think about that. As the starting temperature goes down, how does the height change? Hmm. Yeah. So so hopefully hopefully you're noticing that um, you know you start with high temperature and it goes much higher in the air. Um, but as the t starting temperature goes down, it doesn't go as high, and eventually it just doesn't go anywhere. So 
Um, I just kind of started a sentence starter here for those of you who want a sentence starter for this question. But I noticed that uh, as the starting temperature decreases, the final height, I'll let you finish that sentence yourself. Um, all right, and then um, just just a couple things um, that, that I wanted you to notice was um, it only rose when it was warmer, right? This was the same temperature as the air around it, but it didn't really rise. Um, so that's probably something important for us to keep in mind. Um, but let's let's take a look. We've got one more simulation test to do. Um, let's see, scroll down. So, and this simulation test is actually nice and simple for us. Uh, I actually like this uh, test a lot. It's nice and simple for us. So, um, we are we are investigating what determines how much an air parcel will cool. Um, so, what we're doing is we're observing the sim in regional weather mo mode one. Uh, we're just creating an air parcel and press and run, observing the temperature on the right side of the screen and then answering the question, nice and simple. Once again, if you have the simulation and can do it yourself, you are welcome to do that and just skip forward. Um, if not, you're welcome to just stay here with me as we go through this, but this should be nice and quick. Um, so we're opening the sim, we're going to build mode. Let's just set the surface light to a medium amount and we're just pressing run, run and we're looking now at this side of the screen we're basically we're just trying to look at this here and see what happens over time and i know that's kind of quick so i'm going to go to analyze mode actually and and check this out so we start at the ground down here at the bottom i know it's kind of hard for me to point but down here at the bottom it's 15 degrees celsius but as this air parcel rises, you can see the troposphere temperature is going down. So it's going from 15 to 10 to 5 to 0 to negative 5. And then it keeps getting lower and lower, more and more negative until we get to negative 25 degrees. So it is much colder way up there, right? way up there in the sky it's definitely much colder than the ground so let's see let's see what our question is um, so our question is what do you notice about the temperature of the surrounding air at different heights above our surface so uh, I started this sentence for you um, as we go higher above the earth's surface the air temperature does something hmm what happened to that air temperature as that box, as that air parcel went higher up in the air? Hmm. I'll let you finish that sentence on your own. I think, I think, I believe that you can figure out the answer to that one. And then one last thing for us during this is um, there's this word called, make sure I don't cover that up, um, this word called troposphere. Um, the troposphere is the layer of the atmosphere closest to Earth where weather happens. Um, whether you know it or not, uh, weather, that's a good one. Um, whether you know it or not, um, <laughs> there are many different layers of the air above Earth. And I actually have a nice little picture here. Um, there is the troposphere, which as you can see, this is where the clouds and the weather are happening. Um, above that, there's the stratosphere, the mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere, all of these different layers. Um, but what we're focused on is the troposphere, and this is where um, our weather events are happening. And um, that sort of brings us to our first sort of key concept. There are two key concepts this lesson. Um, and this first one is that the troposphere is warmest at the surface and coldest at its highest point. So basically, as you get further away from the surface of the Earth, the air is going to get colder and colder. And we're trying to think about why do air parcels cool more than others? And this might kind of help us solve that. Um, so uh, let's move on to uh, this third quick activity of this lesson then.
And this third activity is actually a very uh, nice little short experiment. Um, since I'm at home, I'm not able to go to school and get my resources. I actually found a video of this for us to watch so we can kind of see what's happening. So I'll kind of narrate this video as it plays. <clears throat> But um, this guy here, um, he's got a very simple experimental setup. Basically, he's got this plastic bag, um, which he has put paper clips on the very bottom of, just to kind of weigh down the bottom. And he's got a toaster, and he's got this uh, piece of paper, which he's going to put over this toaster. And basically, that toaster is going to act as a heater, so kind of like in the simulation where it's heating up the air parcel. And he's basically putting this bag or putting this air parcel over this heat source um, so that as so that the all of the air in that tube and all of the air in that bag is going to heat up. So what I want you to quickly do is make a prediction of um, predict what you think will happen to the plastic bag when he lets it go. So as he lets that toaster heat up the air, what do you think is going to happen? And I've kind of started that for you here. I predict that. Maybe you have a guess of what's going to happen. And I'm going to go back to that video and so we can see what happens here. So as we play, you can see it's barely. Gosh, this is really cool, actually. I really like this experiment. You can totally see that it's rising, rising. And as soon as it's off that tube, it just keeps going. And trust me, there are no invisible wires in this experiment. Um, let's see if I can go back to kind of the exciting part. There's no invisible wires here. This bag is just, has hot air inside of it, basically. And off it goes. So, what happened to the plastic bag and why did this happen? So, once again, I start, kind of started this for you. Um, the plastic bag, bag floated up to the ceiling. And this happened because... And just write your best idea of why you think this bag full of warm air, this bag full of hot air rose to the ceiling. Um, I'm sure you've got a ton of ideas and none of them are wrong at this point. Just write something that you feel like makes sense based on everything we've seen before. And lastly, that brings us to our last key concept of this lesson, which is if an air parcel is warmer than the surrounding air, it will rise. So if you've got an air parcel like we saw in our experiment, which was at no, no difference between it and the air around it, it didn't rise at all. But that really warm air parcel, it was able to rise a lot higher because it was warmer than the air around it. So we're starting to piece together why, um, why these air parcels might rise different heights and make different amounts of rain. Um, and the last sort of piece to this lesson is there's just this sort of quick homework, um, which is just kind of a nice little question um, about hot air balloons. And basically, um, it asks you, if you have two hot air balloons, one is heated with very hot air, one is heated with warm air, um, which one do you think will rise higher? And kind of the secret to answering this one is you've got to think back to... Um, you've got to think back to the simulation activity we did. We had a hot air parcel and a warm air parcel, very similar to a hot air balloon and a warm air balloon. Um, so just give this your best shot at answering this question. Um, I hope you all enjoyed going through this lesson with me. Um, and take care. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, all right. Bye, everyone. Thank you.